The remote mountain locations of the Panhandle of northern Idaho are some of the most beautiful in all America, yet they are not widely known. Many of these areas require a hike of many miles or trips on rough back roads in order to enjoy this scenic beauty. Come with me as we venture out into this amazing wilderness. Our starting point will be the town of Bonners Ferry with its population of 2,500 people. It's nestled along the Kootenai River, just 16 miles south of the Canadian border. From here there are many scenic locations in all directions. From Bonners Ferry, we'll head north up Highway 95, the only highway to Canada through northern Idaho. We'll go up through the Kootenai Valley with the east side of the Selkirk Mountains on our right, up past Dawson and Queen Lakes to our first stop, which will be an overlook alongside the road where we get our first glimpse of what this area looks like. From this overlook we travel northeast. Leaving the highway for a moment, we catch a glimpse of what the border between America and Canada looks like out in this remote forest location. Few people ever see this line cut through the forest which separates the two countries as it travels up and down the mountains through the wilderness. Coming back to the highway, we'll continue northeast on Highway 95 to Robinson Lake. It's hidden from the highway and has a national forest campground and some mighty fine fishing. From Robinson Lake, we'll take a side trip south on Meadow Creek Road, the first road built up to Canada in these parts. It winds along the Moye River, which is a tributary to the Kootenai River. It has many interesting locations. If one knows where to look, the site of the old Eileen Dam on the Moye River can still be seen, hidden away in this remote forest location. 
In 1923, the Eileen Dam was constructed here on the Moye River. Unfortunately, the dam wall was anchored to a weak rock structure, which collapsed as the reservoir behind the dam was filling. The hydroelectric generator was to supply power to a lumbering operation above in the mountains. The remains of the Westinghouse generator are still in the powerhouse. After a forest fire devastated the lumbering operation above, the collapsed dam wall ended this endeavor before any electricity was ever produced. From the Moye River Canyon, let's go north toward the Canadian border. Just half a mile south of the border, we find Little Copper Lake in the far northeast corner of Idaho. It can be reached by going north to the end of this forest road, which is all but grown over. Leaving the road, we hike up the trail to the lake itself. Copper Creek flows out of Copper Lake to the southeast and eventually over Copper Falls. Copper Creek plunges over a rocky shelf, dropping 225 feet to be the highest falls in northern Idaho. Getting to many of these remote locations requires traveling on winding gravel mountain roads with many switchbacks, but once there, the views are spectacular. <laughs> 